Hello, I'm Philip Duncan with your seasonal and climate update for the month of August and also extending beyond that through to September and October as well. But the main focus of today's video is the month ahead, the new month of August and what lies ahead. So as we do every month with our new climate updates, we are taking a look at where the highs and the lows are placed each week because by doing that you can work out the most likely areas that are dry, the wet areas and also the temperature trends. Are we going to be seeing cold southerlies, mild westerlies or warm northerlies? So let's get into it with our air pressure maps. Now as usual with these climate monthly updates, um, you know we can't necessarily give you the forecast for August the 18th. But what we can do is work out roughly where the highs and lows are. And once you work out where they are, and then you factor in our mountains and ranges, you can start to build a picture. So we kick off on August 1st. Look at the huge area of high pressure over Australia in the red box there. So another big high coming our way. We've got another enormous area of high pressure just out to New Zealand's east at the moment. 1041 hectopascals. That is a big, solid area of high pressure. In the middle, we've got a couple of areas of low pressure and they're being squashed by the two big highs on either side. So these systems are falling apart. There's a little bit of rain on the west coast. We'll see some showers in the north, but at this stage, most of the heavy falls do look like they will be offshore. In fact, when we just fast forward a couple of days on to uh, August 3rd, you notice that that low has really shrunk in size. So it falls apart quite significantly as this big high from Aussie merges with this enormous high out over the Chatham Islands. And there's another huge high developing, 1040 hectopascals. That's a massive one coming in as we go through the new month of August. So moving through and we get into August 7, which is the beginning of the second week of the month. And we do have a new low. Now this one might be in a better position to bring rain in. It may also bring a wintry change because after it is another massive high. And before a high rolls into New Zealand, there's the cold southerly that comes up around it, anticyclonic winds. So there's a cold southerly there behind this low and this low is likely to deepen as it crosses over New Zealand because there's nothing in the Southern Ocean to stop it from growing. This is all low pressure right across the screen down in the south. That's normal for this time of the year. So there could be a rainmaker coming in the second week of August with a burst of showers over the North Island. By the way, that's still a subtropical flow on August 7. So the first week of August, pretty much dominated by subtropical winds. But this looks like a bit of a squash zone, windy, wet, and then behind it, could be getting a bit cold. As we go through to the middle part of the month, August 14, and this is also the third week of August, and you can see here, high pressure growing over northern New Zealand, so therefore mostly dry. Further down the island, you've got windy westerlies, and that's why this map matters. You've got a belt of high pressure to the north of our screen here, it goes all the way off right to the other side. Down in the Southern Ocean, it's all low pressure across here. So when you've got highs to the north, lows to the south, it's like an air pressure sandwich, and the middle part of it, the filling, is made up of westerlies. And another way of looking at that, it's kind of a sign of spring being just around the corner because westerly winds kind of dominate our weather pattern when we're in spring. So that's the forecast through to the middle part of the month and we can sort of extend through that third week that we're likely to see westerly or northwesterly winds and high pressure in the New Zealand area that might drive in more rain on the west coast and more showers into the North Island's west coast. So let's take a little bit more of a closer look at the rainfall. This is the next seven days rainfall compared to average from July 30th to August 6th. Areas in red, that leans drier. Areas in white, that's average rainfall. And the areas in blue lean a little heavier. So I'll step out of the way so you can actually see New Zealand. And you can see what that high pressure belt out to the east is doing. It is making it drier than average across New Zealand. Those lows that are trapped though in the Tasman that's why you're seeing the Tasman Sea leaning wetter than normal. And once again, the interior of Australia is leaning dry, but the good news is they've got rain falling here along the eastern side. Here is the rainfall map, the rain accumulation map for the next two weeks. This takes us right through until about August 15. So it's quite a bit of time. Now, 
these aren't perfectly accurate. You know, nothing that goes beyond a few days is perfectly accurate. Even arguably uh, within 24 hours, there's still a bit of a struggle. But what we can do is work out roughly where the rain is likely to be and where the drier areas are. And the wettest area and the driest area are not far apart. The blue on the west coast, uh, if I step out of the way again, that's pointing down to two or three hundred millimeters of rain. That's a lot of rain coming in for that western side. But up here on the western side of the North Island, we're in the yellows. That's more around the 20, maybe 30 millimeters. So that's the next two weeks. So a lot of high pressure will dominate. Now, yeah, there might be an isolated downpour with this sort of subtropical wind. Someone might get a lot more than that in an isolated spot. But overall, you can see that the upper part of the North Island and the eastern side are leaning a little bit drier, whilst the, whereas the west coast is definitely leaning onto the wetter side of things. So let me try and explain that a little more. Um, here is the IBM data. Now this is very simplistic. It's the most accurate data on Earth and it's about 65% accurate for this long range stuff. And then you factor in there the mountains that we've got and that can change things even more. It only takes one low or one high in New Zealand because we're so small and things can change but it's still the most accurate data on Earth. So it's a really good place to start from. And so when we look at this, you can sort of see what I was just explaining, that the west coast of both islands looks like they'll get a bit of rain coming up, probably leaning a little bit wetter than average, but the very north under all that high pressure, still leaning drier than normal, as is the eastern half of the North Island. Now the South Island is looking wet everywhere, other than maybe a little patch here in the mountains which looks like it might be a bit drier. Most of the places are leaning wetter than average. Now that's interesting to note after seeing those maps with all the highs in them. So I think that might be an indicator that that low in the second week of August might be driving in some showers across the South Island. It doesn't take a lot for the South Island to lean wetter than average. So don't mistake that for a lot of rain coming. It might only be, uh, as you can see on the, uh, the legend here, it may only be a couple of millimeters, a few millimeters more than average. So it's not looking overly dramatic, but the main takeaway is that Northern and Eastern areas look as if they'll be a little bit drier. And that's another sign of those westerly winds. When we switch on for the next three months, August, September, October from IBM, it shows that the spring westerlies are likely to kick in and therefore wet weather comes in, even into Auckland, fingers crossed. You know, we've got the water shortage issues up there. That's partially a man-made problem, but also uh, the rain will be very welcome. And you can see the trend, eastern areas of the North Island, for the next few months ahead, leaning drier than normal, which is sort of usual when you go into spring with all the westerlies that blow through. But either way, I think overall, most people will be pretty happy with the forecast. Here are the temperatures. So the temperatures for August, Leaning warmer than average nationwide, according to IBM's supercomputer Watson. Uh, pretty much everybody, not a huge amount, but within a degree warmer than usual. And when we extrapolate that, great word, across August, September, October, it doesn't look a great deal of uh, difference in there. Although you might notice just down here in the south, you're probably more about average, which is a bit of a sign you could be getting a couple of southerlies. Before I go, the Australian scientists who work at the Bureau of Meteorology, it is an absolutely fantastic department, BOM, B-O-M, out of Australia. This is their tracking of La Nina over the next few months, because there's a bit of chatter now that La Nina is forming. As you can see, August, only just slightly off neutral. As we go into October, it's getting a little bit further towards La Nina, and once we get to December, almost into that La Nina category. So this is something to keep an eye on. We're getting a little bit of a hint of it at the moment with all these subtropical winds. La Nina brings in more cyclones to the north, warmer sea conditions, more cloud, so it can be a, a good forecast for farmers, but not necessarily a great one for holiday makers. Too early to lock in, far too early to lock in. And we're a long way, New Zealand, from the equator, which is where they measure uh, La Nina. But we'll be keeping a very close eye on this forecast. Thank you very much again to the Bureau of Meteorology in Australia. And that is all from me for our climate update for this month. We'll see you again next month when spring starts. <laughs>